Hey guys, hope you're doing well. My name is Ben Ibbotson and I'm a 2D animator. Today in this tutorial, I want to talk about one of my favorite principles of animation, anticipation, and how you can use it within your animations. So let's jump into After Effects and check it out. So I thought I'd start off this tutorial by showing you a quick example I've made where I've created anticipation on the jump of this cube. Now anticipation can be used in any movement, in any, um, in a character, in this cube, in mouse, moving around, in text, moving across screen, in anything moving in After Effects. And anticipation is just basically the pre-movement to your movement. So if I want my cube to jump in the air, before it leaves the ground, I'll get it to squash down slightly just as if it's generating that power so the viewer can connect and doesn't feel uncomfortable when the movement happens. Because sometimes if something moves straight away, it surprises the viewer and it makes them feel a bit unsettled. So with this anticipation, it makes the viewer feel like they know what's coming and it makes them feel more comfortable and at ease when they're watching. So I'll show you very quickly how I've done this. So, right, let me create a new composition. I'll start from scratch. So I'm gonna do a new shape layer and just create a nice square cube. Make it white so it punches off the background. And get rid of my stroke. So, let me just have a quick see how big this is. Uh, let's just make it 450 by 450. So, to start off with what I'll do is I'll make the cube do the jump and then I'll add the anticipation on after so let me get the cube in a position that I wanted to start in so it's going to start at the bottom of the screen let's do it at 700 I'm a big fan of round numbers add a keyframe go to two seconds add another keyframe because that's when I'll get it to land because it's not going to jump for too long and then halfway through I'm just going to tab it up a little bit let's go 350 so I'm just going to show my play bar so we can see it quicker. Uh, N and B on the keyboard to shorten your timeline. So press space. And we've got a cube jumping. I'm going to make it a little bit longer because that didn't feel like a very long time for a jump to happen. So there you go. That's our jump. We're done. Winner, winner, award winning animation. Um, Firstly, what I want to do is I want to add energy to that jump. Like it just looks so static. Your default keyframes are generally linear, which means every, your pace moves in a straight line. So these graphs here are very straight, and I don't want them straight because there's just no energy in that jump. So what I'm going to do is select them and press Fn F9 on a Mac, and that's eased them. So that's that's all right, so it's got like a little bit of speed to them. But what I want to do, when you jump, because of gravity, you start off with a really high velocity, and then at the top of your jump, you kind of slow down and hover a little bit. So I'm not going to get it to stand still, but I'm going to make this curve here. So I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see what's happening. I'll make this curve here really wide. In fact, I'll pretty much make it go to 100. So what that's done is just slowed that speed down. So now, if I play it again, you'll see it's hanging there and then falling again. But what I want to do, because when you fall, you don't slow down when you fall. You fall really fast. And the further, so I want to bring these all the way to pretty much right to the end. So then what that'll do, around 5%. So I'll press play now. So that's going to explode, stop, and then land. Lovely jubbly. So that's, that's the basic jump. So that's got no anticipation on whatsoever. So there's nothing wrong with these keyframes. It looks fine, but there's no anticipation to it. So what I want to do, I want to get that slight scaling that as it's, before it jumps, it's generating the power. So... To do this, I'm going to play around with the scale of the cube, but at the minute, the, the anchor point's in the middle of the cube, and I don't want it to be in the middle, I want it to be at the bottom, because wherever you scale, so you press S on your keyboard to get your scale up, wherever you scale down, wherever your anchor point is, that's where your scale point is. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to move my scale point. So I know this way it's handy. I know the size, so I'm going to make it 400 just because it's easier for the maths. So I know that from the middle point to the bottom point now is 200 pixels. So all I need to do on here is just drag this to 200 and the anchor point is at the bottom. So now obviously I'll need to move my keyframes back down a little so it's at the bottom of the screen. So now if I open my scale tool up, I'll label my layer so I know what's what. Let's make a different color, just I like the colors. Um, so now where I, where I scale is scaling from my anchor point, which is what I want. So at the minute, my scales are linked. So if you click on this little unlink, um, so basically if I move them, they're moving at the same value. But if I click on this, I can scale them individually. The X and the Y. So to generate the scale, what I want to do, I want the cube to shrink down as if it's like getting closer to the floor. So generating that power in its legs. So I want to add a keyframe to start off with. Just move six or so frames in. And I can time it all up once we've got it blocked in. We can then play with the timings of things. So I want to drop the percentage down so it's getting smaller. But with this, as it's getting smaller, so I'll probably go 80 just to make it more characteristic. Um, I don't want my cube to lose any of its volume. So even though I'm shrinking it down 20%, what I want to do is make it grow 20% on the X. So the cube is staying the same volume. It's just moving the dimensions of it. And then what I'll do is quickly reverse that. So I'll go 80. 120 So now we'll already see and I'll just ease those just for starters and I've added the last keyframe Onto when the jump starts so it shrinks down and jumps up and Then what I'll do is at the top I'll just make it 100 again So it's got back to its proper size So it shrinks and jumps So I think the, the keyframes are there. I think everything's a little bit too slow. There's not enough energy, especially to that last jump, because you want to you wanna slowly recoil. So you, I don't mind that. I might even make it a little bit longer to add the emphasis of it's like winding up an elastic band. And then I want this to be really quick. So this, I'm probably not going to make an easy thing. I'm just going to make that linear. So it's gonna, there we go. So it's add a lot more. I'll probably just put this here around here. So it's boom, there we go. So it's got that. It's building up its power, 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 and then quick release. And that's what generates the power for it to leave the floor. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it to land and just do the same kind, just get it to squash just to make it feel like it's just get squashed just to make it feel like it's um, not landing rigid so as it lands so I'll probably just put another keyframe in here so that's my when it's 100% and then when it lands it needs to squash so it's going to get wider on the x-axis so I'll go 120 again and then obviously I need to keep it the volume the same so I'm going 80 and then all I do on this is I just half them each way, but invert it. So it goes 120, so then this will go to 90. Then the Y will go to 110. Then reverse it, and that'll go 105, 95. Uh, let's have another there. And then this will go, what was it? 105, so this will go 98, 102. So it jumps, lands quick. That doesn't feel right. I'm gonna move this so it's, so the squash is on the impact as it lands. So you want to land and then squash, there we go. So jump and land. Feel free to play around with your easing in your own time. Um, but in, the, in 
in your keyframe speed is where you like you sell all of the motion and all the tension to animations. So that feels a little bit too 90. Maybe it just feels a little bit too gappy. Make it a little bit smaller. There we go, that looks nicer. Dush, landing. And then all I did in my example um, is I, was, I want the cube just to rotate, just to add a little bit more interest to the jump, but I can't add it to the rotation of the square because my anchor points at the bottom, so if I rotate it, it's gonna rotate from here. So within your shape layers, you can individually transform your shape as well as then transform your layer. So if you drop down into the rectangle, you've got your rotation in here. So if I press a keyframe on the rotation and then press U, so I've got my keyframe here on my rotation, and then all I'm going to do is rotate it 180 degrees, so it does one turn in the air. So I'll do it without any easing, so it jumps up, rotates, and lands. And again, I'm just going to ease this, so Fn, F9. Open up graph editor, and I'm going to grab these and extend them quite a bit, so it starts off. In fact, I want to invert that. So instead of it starting off slow, because this, when this is, basically when this line is flat, that's when it starts to go, the speed is slower. So if I drag this all the way here, I can, I'll show you quickly, I'll drag that down, and I'll just scrub through. It'll rotate, it'll rotate really slowly. And then as the speed, as the graph line here gets more vertical, it, the speed gets quicker and it turns. What I want it to do for this example is I want it to start off turning quite quick. So I'm going to drag this line up. So then it'll start turning quick. But then I want it to finish quick as well. So I'm going to make it a bit of a uh, inverted curve. And then this line here, when it gets more vertical, that's when it slows down. So I don't want it to be fully flat. But I want it to start so it turns quick, hovers at the top of the same same point as the, the top of the jump and then it lands quick. So I'll come out of my graph editor. I think that's probably too slow. So I'm just drag the, oops. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. The line was too vertical, it just felt a bit odd. Maybe we don't want it that straight. Bring them in a little bit. There we go, that feels nicer. Thanks for watching guys, hope there's something you've learned from this tutorial. I really hope there's something that you can take away and put into your own projects and your own animations. Please subscribe to my channel, then you'll get all the notifications when new tutorials come out, and I'll see you again soon.